All right, so here you can see I've got the cradle kind of set up there. I uh, went ahead and finished out welding, and I've just got the angle iron just kind of tacked in there. Uh, not really tacked, just kind of clamped in, just so I can make sure my angle is right. Um, I did realize that when this cradle was built, when I welded it up, uh, it did kind of pigeon toe just a little bit. So instead of putting the wheels on there square to the actual trellis and the legs, I should say, I went ahead and stuck the whole assembly up there, and then I squared the wheels up with the actual track on both sides. That way it will go ahead and roll, and I will try to show you that. So as you can see, it rolls pretty good. Um, there is a little bit of wobble in it, but I think that's mainly because there's almost no weight up here. Uh, I think once I have the sawmill well uh cutting head and the engine and everything on there you can have a pretty good amount of weight should weigh this down uh I, hopefully these wheels that i bought uh will last but so right now what i'm gonna do i got these wheels tacked on i'm gonna go ahead and pull this off flip it over finish welding uh the wheels on and then i'm gonna go ahead and what i need to do is i'm gonna have to go ahead and square this up you can see it's kind of cocked over a little bit this way so i'm gonna go ahead and square this up here so that it's straight up and down all the way down uh, as straight as I can get it and then I'm going to finish tacking this in I'm not going to seal weld it all the way just going to tack it all the way down and then uh, do that on both sides and then we should be ready to move on to the control head or I should say the cutting head all right so we're back on the cradle itself and then the cutting head and as you can see I've gone ahead and I've put in these tack welded in these spacers I've got about six inch clearance across the center here and what I've done is, I'll show you a little, little jig. So what I've got is, I've just got this scrap piece of two inch. And what you do is you go ahead and just take your measurement, how far you want it across, put this side on, clamp it down. And then I just use a little framing square or um, actually a speed square to frame up this here, make sure it's square. And then all you have to do is take your bottom piece, slap it up in there, make sure it's flush across there. And then you don't have to worry about when you're welding, trying to keep this thing square and straight and all that. Just keep it next to this here. And then when you're done, you just pop this piece off here. And everything's nice and square, no problems. So we're gonna keep moving on uh, with the actual, adjustment part for the cutting head. So what I've got here, I've got a piece of scrap metal quarter inch plate that already had, it's a, I cut off from another project I had lying around and it's already got this angle iron welded on here. And so what I've done is I've gave myself enough space so that I can sit this on here and then I'm gonna put in some little paper shims, just enough to give it just a little bit of space and then I've got some little flat bar that I cut quarter inch out of this here that's going to get welded on here. And then obviously I've got to put one that goes all the way across. But it's going to have just enough room so that this whole assembly right here will slide back and forth. And then um, that will give me room. Should be able to put my tensioner over here, uh, pushing back on it like this to keep the belt nice and tight. Uh, I've already got my pillow blocks kind of situated here. I've got to figure out how I'm going to lay them out uh, and basically how I'm going to attach the bolts to this um, so that I've got enough room between the two. Here's the other one. So that I've got enough strength to keep it from twisting on there when you have your shaft because the shaft's going to stick out to here and then the, the large sheave um, for the idle side will be on here. Um, so I've just got to have enough to come across here and out this front, just give enough strength to be able to hold it in place here. So that's what I'm working on next is going to be go ahead and welding these pieces here and then I've got to cut another plate that's the same size as this, go across the bottom there and weld that in. So, Okay, after some uh, grinding, cutting, and welding, you can see that I have completed the idle uh, assembly that slides on this 
And what I did was I had the top piece done and then I took a piece of, uh, actually a <laughs> several pieces of paper, folded it over and then pushed it inside here and then clamped it on and then welded this, tacked this on first and did that on both sides. That way I had a little bit of play in there. Then I took the whole thing out and then I cut the bottom plate, took it over to my workbench and then had a piece of a uh, scrap two inch that I stuck in there and then welded in there. So now you can see that this thing slides really, really well. Uh, obviously it doesn't have to slide that much. And then the two pill blocks will fit on here like I showed you before. And then I gotta come up with some kind of clamping system, uh, ratcheting or I don't know what yet, um, to be able to put the tension on here. Uh, but as you can tell, uh, we are making pretty good progress. So I think that's probably gonna call it for today. It's 103 in here right now in my shop, so. So, uh, as you can tell, I got the saw head um, assembly off and have started trying to figure out how to finish bracing across and building the whole thing out. Uh, so what I've done is uh, I've got these seven inch risers uh, that I've put across here. And I'm gonna go, instead of triangulating this thing, I've decided just to square it off because I'm a little concerned about making it too tall and hitting the top of my, um, uh, top of my uh, carriage part. Uh, so you can say, see that I have all of the uprights welded on. Uh, I just spliced this in because I made a cut thinking I was going to make the angle cut and I had to fix that. So anyway, so the, um, the power head or the actual drive uh, pulley part will be over here. And then obviously this is my slider uh, adjustable that I put on. I still got to weld these on. But what I realized real quick is <laughs> that this whole assembly with this is getting way too heavy. So what we're going to do is we're going to get on the tractor, uh, we're gonna put this back on the trolley, and then go ahead and put the cutting head back on there, and that way we can go ahead and start finalizing where it's gonna sit, and then take exact measurements um, on how high I can go uh, with the cutter head. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at now. Uh, it's making pretty good progress. I'm really liking the way it's looking. I think it's gonna work out just fine. I was a little concerned about the 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 strength of this but i'm pretty sure that this design should be strong enough uh, i think the one thing that i probably will do is once i have this upright in here i'm probably going to come in at 45 uh, with some inch and a half on both sides just to give it a little bit of strength so that it i don't have any potential for it to bow that way and give it a little more strength going this way because there's a pretty good gap uh, you know that's probably about 19 20 inches uh, actually maybe farther than that now that i think about it uh, anyway, uh, say 20 inches or so across, and there's going to be no bracing here other than the piece that goes all the way across and down. So putting a little 45 here on both sides with some inch and a half, probably was 30 that up. Uh, well, like I said, I will probably do that on both sides to make sure I got plenty of strength in here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get the carriage back mounted on the rails and then start moving on to the rest of this. Pretty much all the... Uh, cutting head, trellis part, truss part, I don't know what you're going to call it, all tack welded together. Uh, as you can see, pretty well sturdy. Uh, this may be way overkill. Uh, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure, but you know, it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, I guess. Uh, so obviously, like I said, the uh, drive head, we have a plate here, the drive head will come through, and then I've been working on trying to figure out how the motor is going to sit or the engine I should say and so what's going to end up happening is I'm going to end up having to build uh, something to come across here so there's going to be a plate that's going to sit right in the middle here okay and the motor is going to sit on top of it the shaft's going to stick out this way come down and then hit the drive pulley here and then like I said pillbox will be there um, what's going to allow it to do the way I've got it designed is when I crank this thing all the way up and it comes up here and makes contact with this the motor will fit nice and neat all up in this open area over here and won't interfere with anything. So there should be plenty of room for the motor to rise all the way up into this top section here. And that should give me plenty of room um, to be able to cut up to uh, about a 42 inch uh, diameter log, which I'd be hard pressed to find too many at that size around here in South Texas. But 
anyway, so that's where we're at now. Uh, I've got to finish welding. Uh, it takes time with this thin stuff. You have to do a little bit of welding and then let it cool because if you don't, uh, you will warp this stuff. Uh, so it's uh, basically tack a few spots, flip it over, do a couple on the other side to keep it from trying to twist or anything like that. Uh, so it's going to take a pretty good bit of time to let this thing cool, especially when it's 100 degrees out here in the shop. Um, so once I get that done, then we will move on to putting the plate up here and figuring out kind of where the motor is going to sit. And then also I'm going to have to do the metal plate over here and then go ahead and start figuring out uh, how the pillow blocks are going to sit uh, on here, how far I'm going to put them on, how I'm going to attach them. Uh, weld studs in or what so I wanted to show you something I found out I thought about this weekend and have kind of looked at today so the issue I have is the amount of cutting space I have all right so the problem I ran into when I was thinking about it this weekend was that if I mount these pillow blocks up here then my deepest cut is only from the bottom of this to the bottom of this here. And when I measured that out with the pillow blocks on top, I only had a five inch cut. So that means I would only get five inches, of, I mean, bare minimum, five inches of a board. That's as thick as I could cut. Uh, if you're wanting to cut some beams for, I don't know, anything, uh, really thick for construction, uh, pergola, whatever you're trying to build, uh, you know, you may need, 8, 10 inch, 12 inch pieces of beams you want to cut. So what I'm thinking about doing is what you can see here is, uh, <laughs> forgive my uh, fill in piece here, I don't have the shafts yet, um, but I'm thinking about mounting these things on the bottom here, uh, which means I'm going to have to weld in a shaft. Uh, luckily I've got enough room up underneath here to where I think I could drill a hole uh, where each bolt will go all the way through, grind, uh, bevel it down at the end, and then have to cut this off <laughs> I just realized I'll have to cut these things off to take this back off again if I want to do that but anyway um, and then weld them the bolts studs basically straight onto this plate but it's gonna have to be very strong um, so that it will actually I don't have any running risk of this thing snapping off so this gives me uh, I think I measured it off um, end up with um, almost 12 inch you can see there um, almost 12 inch cut, uh, which should be more than enough. I have my, uh, whole assembly flipped upside down so that I could go ahead and work on squaring these up. Now, <laughs> uh, this has been a bit of a challenge. Um, I've got these basically squared off, but I don't have a flat edge right here because I rounded it off. Uh, so what I had to do was I had to use my framing square here and try very hard to get this first one here squared off as best I can. Um, and then I went ahead and took measurements from one point to the other point over here to make sure that the two of them were the same distance apart uh, in the center here. And then what you want to do uh, to make sure everything's square is you go from uh, one point over to the other point and then from here to here, and that makes sure that it's not turned cockeyed. Uh, I had to measure a couple of times, um, but it's very important because you seriously want this thing to be as square to the face of this as you can. Um, you're going to have a little bit of adjustment once you put the bolts in to be able to twist it a little bit and then shift left and right. Uh, but as you can see, once I stick the bolt in there, I'm going to be using, um, I'll be cutting this in half and using this. Hang on a second. There we go. So. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of room to wiggle around. Um, I may end up um, kind of walling out the sides here a little bit to create a little more room uh, just because there's not a lot of play. There's plenty this direction, but not this way here. Uh, so I want to make sure that I'm able to keep, uh, when it's all said and done, the shaft is as square and straight through as I, as I can. Uh, but that's very important that you find a way to make sure that these are the are as square as possible so that shaft goes through and because if these are twisted slightly ever so slightly <laughs> uh, you're going to put a little tension on this bearing that's not going it's not going to be good for you so uh, once I get the shaft done obviously I will run the shaft all the way through 
and try to um, square it up with the other side once that side's done. So now what I'm gonna have to do is get these, I'm um, gonna cut these down and then I have to bevel this pretty heavily uh, so that when I weld it, cause I'm not gonna be able to go through, it turns out. <laughs> so when I weld this on, I need 100% penetration to both sides. So I'm gonna bevel these down pretty heavily to a pretty good point and then weld out there. So um, I'm hoping that these are gonna be strong enough when it's all said and done. Uh, if not, uh, yeah, we may have to come up with another option later, but <laughs> so as you can see, I finally got my uh, sheaves mounted. Uh, the whole assembly is upside down so that I can try to square these up here and figure out where the bolts go for these. So what you've got here, I've got a pair of uh, 18 and 3 quarter inch sheaves. Uh, I got these from a center online that has a bunch of extra stuff, hint, hint. Um, and then I got these inch and a half pillow blocks as well. Uh, one thing that I noticed, um, of course these are not overly expensive, uh, but you'll find out that this is not exactly set in or flush. Um, so you may have to take a, like a hammer and a little punch and just kind of tap these in to where they match uh, all the way around. Um, there's, it's really hard to see, but there's a little lip there, and that little silver part there, the bushing part, actually moves in and out of this heart part here. So you have to kind of adjust it a little bit uh, so that the face of it will be square as you can get it. Uh, so what I've done is I took, uh, let me see here, just a, took a simple framing square here and took a measurement kind of hard to tell I'm moving around too much but anyway put it on there uh, so that it was flush to one side then moved over to the other did the same thing there to make sure it was just barely off or barely touching there and so by doing that uh, on both sides then I can I can assure myself that this thing is square to the face of this so the idea is if I square up this one to this and this is straight when I do the other side over there it'll be the same thing now eventually once I get ready to install the blade obviously I'm gonna have to come in here and then measure off from here to here and make sure that the the two blades or the two sheaths are in line with each other uh, straight across uh, probably gonna use some kind of laser level to go from one side to the other to make sure that we're perfectly uh, straight up and down on both sides of these so that blade doesn't come off but so that's kind of where we're at now uh, what I did was I went in here and uh, I don't know if you can be able to see it yeah you'll see that I went in there and uh, kind of marked the circle out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these off and then go ahead and get my studs and grind those down and then weld those on there and then I should be ready to bolt these on uh, and have plenty of slack to move them around and adjust the whole assembly so I've got uh little studs cut down and beveled and then I started trying to figure out well how am I going to hold this up you know horizontal so that I can get it welded in and then I remembered I got these little magnets so pretty simple little trick just attach it on there try to square it up and then center it in my little hole uh, that I drew in here and then should be able to just tack it in put them all four in there and then come back and finish weld it out and then grind it smooth and I think that should be strong enough um, to do what I need I believe so we will find out I got the first set done uh, like I said I build them pretty heavily uh, I'll tell you what I'll show you kind of an example all right so that's kind of what the bevel looked like and so I filled all that in pretty solid so what I did was I welded one pass I uh, ground it down a little bit and then did the finish weld here for now uh don't be making cracks in my welding <laughs> i'm not a welder uh so anyway uh this one here looked like it got just a little bit uh bent over but it shouldn't be a problem so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put on our pillow blocks and yep as you can tell so i've got a little bit of movement that way and a little bit this way so it mainly just jiggles so the problem is, as you can probably see, is that 
this little bevel right here that comes out. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to grind down a little bit to kind of flatten this out so that I've got a little bit more room. Or the other option, which might be a better option, is I might just open this up a little bit so that there's a little more room on the bottom. The top will be the same, but just kind of open up the bottom a little bit to give room for that. Uh, that may be a better option, actually. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to go that route now that I talk myself into it. Because uh, <laughs> both of them are the same. Um, if it's down, it doesn't move much at all, which is part of what I wanted was to be able to have, you know, that movement. So, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the bottom down here and make room for this. I may clean this up a little bit more just to make sure that it fits inside here and I get plenty of movement, so. All right, so you can see that I got it to, went ahead and beveled out both sides. Um, pretty good little bit there. And now, when you drop it on there, you can see I've got basically full range all the way across and then to adjust it and then I didn't have to I end up not having to take any of my weld off. So I've got plenty of strength in here to hold this again because these are going to be upside down hanging from the bottom when they're done. So got both of those done. So now all I'm going to do is uh, slap a washer, lock washer on here and the nut and then tighten these things down. We'll put the shaft back in and then uh, we'll have to go ahead and get ready and do the other side. I have the uh, pillow blocks and everything mounted got the studs bolted on there got it flipped back over uh, so that is the first look at to kind of what it's going to look like um, I'm happy with that there's a pretty good as you can see there's a pretty good I'm gonna have a pretty good cut depth from the top of there you know from here down to here so um, looks like it's going to work pretty well there uh, yeah really excited about it it's uh it's turning out real well um, I'm hoping this is going to be strong enough to hold that up in there. Uh, it should. Those are pretty dang strong bolts. Uh, I guess it's just depending on what kind of welder I am, uh, kind of penetration I got on there. As you can see, I, I took the uh, washers off. Um, reason being is I needed to be able to adjust it. Um, and the washer was hitting up against here, so there wasn't enough room. Uh, to make adjustments back and forth because the washer was hitting that so took those off. Uh, I don't think it'll be a problem um, We'll see if it's if I think it turns out to be an issue I may just have to flatten some washers off that'll fit in here uh, Just enough, but uh, for now, uh, I think I've got it kind of figured out. It uh, looks like it's Going pretty well happy with it so far. So now uh, we need to go ahead and work on figuring out how to mount the motor up there which I will show you here in a little bit and then uh, this is obviously the drive belt over there so we're gonna have to um, we have to figure out uh, you can't hardly see it there it is there's this yeah so we'll have to figure out a plate that sits on here it's where the shaft comes off and then I'll figure out how far it's gonna come across and then I'll tell me where I need to cut my shaft here because I still have to cut both of these shafts as you can see these are these are three foot shafts, so we're going to, have to cut these off. Uh, this one won't be too bad here, so. But yep, yeah, making good progress.